Hey guys, welcome to another video. We're gonna be trying some new makeup today. Some of the makeup that I hauled in my last PR haul and actually some makeup from the previous PR haul. We're gonna be trying that out today. But in my last PR haul, I got some new jeans from Frame and I want you to show you the white jeans. So these are the slouchy straight jeans. I haven't tried the wide leg uh, jeans on yet, but I did wanna show these to you guys. So these are the size 28 and they don't have any stretch or anything, and they fit really, really well. I'm so, I'm just so happy. <laughs> just so happy when jeans actually fit. So let me show you the bottom. I don't have to get these shortened. I am 5'5". Five five. I'm pretty high-waisted. I have pretty uh, short legs, or I have a long torso, I guess is the nicer way to say that. Um, I have a long torso, but these just, God, they just are so comfortable. They don't have any stretch. Like I said, they're 100% cotton and they are button fly. Actually, let me just tuck in my shirt here so you can see. They are button fly. They have like a five pocket design, very basic. And I love them. I cannot believe the good luck that I'm having with jeans. <laughs> First, it happened with the Madewell jeans, those wide leg uh, cropped jeans, I think. And then uh, the Air, uh, the Frenchy jeans. I love those with the little bit of stretch. They're so, so nice. And then these frame jeans. I feel like looking for the perfect pair of jeans is worse than a bathing suit, is worse than a job, is worse than apartment hunting. Like it is the most arduous, painful, tedious task ever. And I feel like I've just gotten so, <laughs> so lucky. So these are the frame, I'll link them down below, but I think the style name is something like slouchy straight jeans. And you know, I would say they probably run a little bit big because again, I mean, the, the air jeans were a size 28. These are a size 28. I just don't think I'm a size 28. I definitely have tried on size 28 jeans in the recent past and they, did not fit, like not even close. So I would say I would probably be comfortable uh, generally in a 29. So yeah, I would say these uh, run a little bit large and it, I think it will even say that on the website. So anyway, I'll link these down below, but these are so great. Oh my God, I'm so happy. So, so happy. I have my perfect white jeans for the summer. Well, I was gonna film out here with natural lighting, but can you hear the leaf blowing? Of course, it just started up. I'm gonna go into my filming room actually, and uh, we'll film in there. All right, so some of the new makeup we're gonna be trying today, some of the Armani Beauty stuff that I picked up at Sephora. So the Luminous Silk Cheek Tint and the two new shades in the Prisma Glass High Shine Hydrating Oil Infused Lip Gloss and the new Suku Cream Touch Blush and Lip. We've got a lot of cream cheek products going on, so I don't know how many I'm gonna be able to squeeze on, but we'll try and figure it out. They came out with three new shades, so we'll be trying those. And then we'll definitely be trying out the new Surat uh, liquid highlighters. Oh, and the new Hourglass Vanish airbrush pressed powder. I have the shade Translucent. So I wanted to use the Natasha Denona High Glam Powder Foundation as a foundation. I used it as a setting powder over the new Lisa Elder skin tint and it was great. Um, I have dry skin. I don't really like a matte look so I just wasn't inclined to use it as a powder foundation and so I was going to use that today but then Hourglass sent this to me and I'm more curious about this as a setting powder versus that as a powder foundation. So anyway, what we're gonna do is use the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Tint, my new favorite foundation, and then we're gonna try the Hourglass Powder on top. So I'm just gonna shake this up. I am using shade T4, and I'm just gonna squeeze some out onto the back of my hand here. I usually have to squeeze out a little bit more again uh, because I like to use a brush, which I know eats up a little bit more product versus just using your hands, but I don't know. I just like the application with the brush better. So I'm using the Sonia G Classic Base Brush and I'm just going to work it in. Oh, it's not so beautiful. It's so beautiful. <laughs> okay. Is that not fantastic? My skin looks so healthy with that skin tint. Okay. So now let's try the Hourglass Airbrush Vanish Press Powder. 
and I'm gonna use my Sonia G face pro brush this is the big fluffy angled brush I don't like to kind of mindlessly just powder my whole face I really like to just focus on the areas where I do feel like uh, I get a little bit of extra shine or I just feel like I want to um, set my makeup down a little bit more and that's generally you know in my t-zone and then right on the tops of my cheekbones so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna start over here ooh ooh <laughs> Ooh, very mattifying, but it leaves like a nice kind of like satin finish and it really didn't take a lot of product. I'm just gonna go in there just once and use it over my nose also. Ooh, nice. I like the soft, kind of like soft focus matte finish that I'm getting. Oh, that's really nice. I also wanna mention that this powder is talc free. Ooh, that's lovely trying to think back to when I used the Natasha Denona just as a setting powder. I like them both. Yeah, I like them both. I'll have to do a little comparison and let you know in my monthly favorites which one won out. But this one is really, really great. You know what I'm going to do actually before I go any further? Make Beauty actually sent me some of their new lip reset masks and this one is in Celestial Caramel, which I love. It is so so incredible it even looks like caramel doesn't it oh, it smells so good anyway I've already used it a couple of times I'm just going to grab a little bit and there's like a little bit of gooeyness can you guys see that <laughs> a little bit of gooeyness to this mask which is really nice and I'm just gonna apply some and let it do its magic while I put on the rest of my makeup all right I don't have any new bronzers so let's jump into all of these cheek products that I have oh how should we do this okay I've got the cheek tints from Armani Beauty I am especially curious about these I got bold pink that's what bold pink looks like it's a very cool toned pink and then I also got rosy peach which is not very rosy at all <laughs> just like straight up peach I think what I'll do is let's do both shades on one cheek let's see okay let's start with rosy peach i'm going to um yeah i'm gonna go right in i'm gonna dab three dots and i'm gonna use my sonia g mini base brush and then i'm just gonna pounce this in oh how pretty let me take a close look i want to see if it disturb the powder or the foundation or anything underneath no ah my ac just went off if you heard that humming in the background that's what that was um wow that looks that looks quite beautiful quite beautiful and it has a really kind of like cloud-like um uh, finish so not quite matte not quite satin at all just almost like a velvety finish. Ooh, okay. So that's the rosy peach. You know what? Let's just let's just go ahead and use the bold pink on the other cheek and then I'll just remove this part of my makeup and we'll we'll do the suku. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me apply the bold pink. Oh my gosh, this is so cool toned. It's such a Barbie pink. Now, when I swatched these, I don't know if you guys caught my PR haul, when I swatched these, they were so opaque looking. Actually, you can see it on my cheek there. Really opaque looking with like, I don't know, almost like a really strong white base. And I was like, oh, what are these blushes gonna look like? But immediately they blend out into sheer goodness. Ooh, gorgeous. Okay, so bold pink, rosy peach. Yeah, this is great for like neutral warm looks and this is great for like cooler tone looks. Oh, I love it. All right, let me go ahead and remove <laughs> this part of my makeup and I'll be right back to play with the Suku Cream Touch. Okay, foundation and powder have been reapplied. I think that looks, I think that looks like nothing happened. Okay, all right, let's try the Suku Cream Touch Blush and Lips. So. 
I've got three colors here. Let's try two of them. I think I want to try the one in the middle, which is S01, and then this one, which is like, uh, like a watermelony, juicy color, and this is S02. This one is quite beautiful, but it's a little bit uh, deep for me. I don't usually wear shades like this. We'll stick with S01 and S02. Ooh, the texture of these, they feel quite smooth, but they don't feel too uh, oily or wet or too creamy. Uh, they feel a little bit more emollient than the Clay de Peau cream blushes and a little bit uh, like thinner than the Cure Weiss cream blush. So I would say kind of in between those. So I'm just gonna tap with my finger. I may need to go in with a brush to really blend it out smoothly. Actually, I have my Refer 37 brush, and I'm just going to pounce over and really blend this out. Nice, I think that blends out really beautifully, and the finish is very skin-like. I wouldn't say there's any sort of emollient shine or anything like that. Hold on, let me take a close, close look and see if it's disturbed any of the makeup underneath. No, I think it all still looks intact. Yeah, very pretty. And the color is, uh, the shade is, you know, very similar to what you see in the pot. It hasn't changed or shifted at all. If anything, maybe it looks a little peachier on the skin versus in the pot, but that's about it. All right, so that's SO1. I really like this formula. It's um, it's so nice. Like I said, it's kind of in between. It's not too thick, it's not too thin, it's not sticky or tacky, it's not too emollient. It's really very smooth, very, very smooth. So here's SO2, the kind of watermelon shade that I want to try. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pick some up with my finger and then just tap. I'm going to take another refer brush number uh, 18, I think this is. Yeah, number 18, and just go over. Oh, that's pretty. This has a little bit of coolness in there. I feel like I see, uh, like it's watermelony, but it's also like a little bit of a cranberry, raspberry sort of like tint to it. And I'm just going to pick some up with my brush. That works very easily. Picked up product very easily. And now I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Yeah, if you want a really kind of heated look, this is perfect. It's so pretty. So, so pretty. All right. Well, my two cheeks look completely different. <laughs> this is the SO2 and this is the SO1. Oh, beautiful though. Oh, I love it. All right, now for the new Surratt Artistic Liquid Highlighters. I swatched these for you when I hauled them, but I'm gonna swatch them one more time because I'm not gonna use Shishi or Fru Fru. Now, I will show you why. Shishi, I believe, is too deep for my skin tone. So Shishi is that bronzy color, and then Fru Fru has a little bit of pink in there, which is great for like a cooler tone look but that's not what I'm going for today. So what I'm going for today is the shade La May, which is a nice kind of middle of the road, soft gold shade. That's this one over here. Here is the packaging, which I think is a great idea. It's just a little bit messy, as you can see, because you turn the bottom of this to get product to come out of the middle of this sponge tip which is great but then like the product will keep coming out for a little bit because it's air pressurized it'll keep coming out a little bit and so you end up kind of with a little bit of mess inside the cap there there's like a lot of product in there so the packaging isn't my favorite but the product seems really really promising <laughs> so i'm going to turn the bottom here carefully because i don't want to release too much product here I'm just tapping it where I always put highlighter, <laughs> right on the tops of my cheekbones. Ooh, look at that. This has a very wet slash glossy, like dolphin skin. This has like a dolphin skin 
kind of finish. Really smooth, glossy shine. Ooh, very, very pretty. Let me take, again, another close look and make sure it didn't disturb any of the makeup underneath. I don't believe it did. Let me just blend this out a little bit more. I'm actually gonna take this uh, 18 brush again and I'm just pouncing it over. Okay. Love, love, love this highlighter. Now Surratt also has stick highlighters, very beautiful, but they have almost like, um, like a powdery uh, sort of feel to them. And so the finish of that highlight, I mean, they're very, very high shine. But there is, like, you can almost see that it's kind of powdery. It's, it's such an interesting texture. These are a little bit more straightforward in terms of their appearance. And I love a good cream slash liquid highlighter. I just think they give off, like, a really beautiful, more subtle shine than, like, a powder highlight. All right. Hold on. Let me wipe my hands off. I've got like all this cream product all over my hands. All right, no new brow products in, so I'm just gonna use my Benefit Brow Setter. As for eyeshadow, I thought I would use the other Addiction Tokyo quad that they sent over. I used the one that had like the taupe and it was pinks and it was like just a little bit of a cooler color story altogether. This is obviously pretty warm with like the peach and uh, this like light red color here. I think I'm actually gonna focus definitely on this shade up here, but I'm really intrigued by this uh, purpley shade. It's, it's very dusty and it just, yeah, it's just appealing to me right now. So I think we're gonna put that all over my lid and just sort of accent with uh, the white uh, shimmery shade. So I've got my Sonia G Blender Pro Brush. I'm gonna go into that uh, dusty purple shade. And this Addiction Tokyo Quad, by the way, is part of their Out of Your Shell limited edition collection. And so once these sell out, they're pretty much gone, which is kind of sad. And I know like Suku does the same thing. Like once it's gone, it's gone. So if you are interested in any of these, I would definitely, definitely hop on it. So this purpley shade is like a satin finish. And true to a lot of Japanese makeup, the pigmentation is on the lighter side, which I enjoy. Always leaves more of like an ethereal kind of look. One moment, please. Let me swatch these for you. Why didn't I swatch these <laughs> shades for you? Okay, there are the four shades. So the two top shades, including that white shade that I want to use, appear to be like toppers especially the white one. The orange one actually is a little bit more opaque, but they have like a wet look to them, which is really nice. And then there's that reddish gold shade and then the purple shade that I've been using all over. So I'm gonna use my Refer 07 brush. It's uh, like a blender brush. And I'm gonna go into this white topper shade and I'm going to lightly dust it over like the inner portion of my lid just to kind of highlight that. See how that looks? Yeah, this shade is a little chunkier. Let's see if I'm getting any fallout. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of fallout. So maybe the smarter move would have been to use a shader brush, which kind of controls um, these flakes a little bit better than a blender brush. But look how pretty that is. Ah, I love it. I love it, that is a great combination. But I did get quite a bit of fallout there, so I would suggest using a shader brush with those top shades, or even your finger and just kind of pressing it in. That probably would have been a much, much better situation. All right, let me go ahead and curl my lashes. I do have a new to me mascara that I wanna try. So this is the Grande Cosmetics Grande Fanatic Fanning and Curling Mascara. And I feel like I may have tried this many, many, many moons ago, but the way that this is described in terms of it being fanning and curling uh, is very, very appealing to me. So this is in the shade black. I don't know if they have any other shades. And look at this tube. This is like the happiest tube of mascara I've ever seen. So it's got a really interesting wand. It's the plastic bristle. 
uh, but it's definitely uh, like uh, flatter. So yeah, it looks it looks flat from one angle and then wider from the other. So I'll just go right in. Hmm, very nice. Definitely very separating. I'm trying to see if my lashes are still curled. They are. They're still curled. Very nice. All right. I am going to skip eyeliner. I think I'm good. And I'm going to use my <laughs> new favorite lip liner from Lisa Eldridge in the shade 1N. It's just the most perfect kind of grungy shade right here. So good. Oh, I still have that lip mask on. Let me wipe some of this off. All right, little bit of lip liner there. I just use my finger and blend that out a little bit. And then let's check out these new Prismaglass shades that I got from Armani Beauty. So I've got Nude Glow and then I have Amber Shine which is this guy. I'm gonna try this one first because I wanna end up with this one. Here is Amber Shine. I love the formula of these. Just thin, no fragrance, a very decent level of pigmentation, nothing too crazy. Oh, this is the other shade that I have, or I should say the first shade that I got. I think this is Honey Glow. It's number three. I think it's Honey Glow. This is the shade that had me fall in love with this formula. And they call it like a high shine gloss. I don't think it's super duper high shine. I don't think it's one of those glosses that really makes your lips look like glass-like. I just think it, it gives it a little bit of shine. I think it's a, a perfect amount of shine. Yeah, so I love the formula. I love the appearance. I love the no fragrance. I love these shades. There's, it's just so good. It's so, so good. Let me take this off and then we'll put on the nude glow. Okay, I think I have a bit of that lip liner left. So I'm just gonna go right in with the nude glow. Perfection, absolute perfection. This is definitely <laughs> my new favorite lip gloss, oh my. Oh my, oh my. Wow, oh I love that. I'm so glad I picked this up. All right guys, that is it for this trying new makeup video and trying new jeans. Um, did I get makeup on these jeans? I did. <laughs> okay, don't wear white jeans when you are filming a makeup video. Oh fooey, I think I'm making it worse. Okay, <laughs> that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.